G'day viewers, welcome back. In this video I'll be taking you through the settings menu for Janus VR. I'm using version 46.8. Remember Janus is alpha software. These settings will change. As they do I'll make new YouTube videos and upload them. The notes from this YouTube clip will be uh, put into the description so you can refer back to them later. Okay, let's begin. You press escape to bring up the menu then click settings with your left mouse. With this menu you can press escape again to make it go away or you can just walk away and it will disappear. Press escape, left click on settings. I'll start from left, work to the right. On the left the choices are multiplayer. If you tick it that means you are connected to the multiplayer server. You can see and hear other people. The VoIP will work. They can see what portals you put down etc. If you untick that nobody can see what portals you put down you won't be able to hear anyone. Okay let's leave that connected for now. The second box, that's the room you start in when you first start Janus. By default, it is set to this lobby that we're in now. That's the address for this lobby here. But you can put any room you like. You can change it anytime you like. And that's where you'll start when you start Janus. Third box, this is the default multiplayer server. You can also change this to any other multiplayer server. Any room that doesn't have in its code an overriding multiplayer server like the VR bar has its own multiplayer server automatically subscribes to the default multiplayer server you have set here. This one is used, uh, provided free from VR sites generously. Fourth box down this decides whether the port that it connects on 5567 is the SSL port 5566 is the non SSL port as you can see here beta.vrsites.com is connected on SSL server. The next one, this is the ping. This is the rate that the packets are sent to the multiplayer server from your client. This includes the VoIP and all the movement. We've worked out that 175 seems to work quite well, remembering that Janus is a global program. Sound also seems to work quite well with 175. Moving over to input, gamepad. If you tick this, your, three, your Xbox 360 controller will work and you can control Janus that way. Untick, obviously, it won't work. The next one down is Leap Motion. Leap Motion, by default, when you connect it, will work with Janus. You don't have to have a tick box. By default, Janus thinks that your Leap Motion is on the desktop facing up. If you tick this box, you're telling Janus the Leap Motion is connected on the front of your HMD. Okay. Next one, Decouple Head. That's a VR setting. When you move your head, your body moves with you. If you decouple head, your head moves separately to your body. Third one. We'll leave that one connected. Sorry, fourth one down. Invert pitch. If you, t if you tick invert pitch, I'm pushing the mouse forward. I go down. I pull the mouse back. I go up. Some people like that. I prefer to the other way around. Next, pitch rotation. If you untick pitch rotation, you'll be stuck with your mouse you'll only be able to move on the plane, the horizontal plane I'm moving my mouse forward and back, it makes no difference but your head mounted display when you move your head, you'll move your head up and down your mouse won't affect your head movements, only your head will affect your head movements it's to stop you getting motion sick by your mouse doing one thing and your head doing another I'll leave that switched on for now in desktop mode, it's very handy to have pitch rotation turned on Next one down, it's comfort mode. Some people have experienced VR sickness. Pit comfort mode allows you to use the Q and E keys to make turns via degrees. I've got it turned on now, I'll press E. As you can see, I'm moving by small increments. Q to make myself go back again. Now, the next one below it is a slider bar. This is important and refers to the comfort mode as well. If we move this to the left, that means our mouse is going to have to move a lot faster. As you can see, I'm moving my mouse. It's a lot smoother and slower. Back to here. And if I press Q and E for comfort mode now, as you can see, it's much smaller ticks. So left makes it move smaller. If I move it to the right, all the way over to the right. Now if I press the E key, as you can see, great big increments. Usually we leave it here in the middle. The only reason you might want to adjust this is if you want to move smaller amounts or you want a much smoother mouse for when you're recording videos. Self-avatar. 
This decides whether or not you can see yourself. I've got self avatar ticked. You can't see your avatar while you're in the settings menu, so I'll tick it on now. I'll press escape. Uh, hang on. Picture rotation, but turn that back on. Now, if I look down, I can see my avatars. You can see I can see my shoulders and my chest. If I go to settings, untick self avatar, I can't see myself. Very handy if you want to look straight down between your feet and you're very high. Turn self avatar back on. Next one down is anti aliasing. The only choices in Janus VR for anti aliasing are on or off. So you get choices of zero anti aliasing or four times. Anti aliasing gets rid of the jaggies and makes things look a lot prettier. Leave that switched on if you've got a anything above a, a half decent video card, you'll appreciate the pretty. Next one down, show crosshairs. If I tick that one on, as you can see, a white crosshair turns up exactly in the center of the screen to show me where I'm looking. This makes it easier for some people to click on things. I'll turn that off. Next one down is chat log. You can tick chat log here. I'll press escape and escape, and as you can see, it comes up. All right, and press C, which turns it off. When I come back into settings, chat log's turned off. Font, next one, font Ubuntu. If you tick that, you'll have Ubuntu font. If you look at interface at the top here, that's that font. If you untick that, it will return to the default font, which is Liberation Mono. I like Ubuntu. I'll put that back on. UI sounds. If you turn the UI sounds on, you'll hear the, the noises. I press Escape. That's the sounds you'll hear. We'll turn that on for the moment. The UI choices. The UI choices. If you leave this unticked, you'll get the male voice. I'll demonstrate. Specify new location, then press enter to construct. Okay, now if we tick UI voice female. Specify new location, then press enter to construct. And of course, if we untick UI sounds, it overrides the UI voice and we get no sound. Okay, next one across, open settings folder. If you, tick, if you click Open Settings folder, Janice, if it's running in desktop mode in full screen, will window mode, and it will automatically open the folder that your settings are stored in, which is on your C drive under C, Default Users, App Data, Roaming, Janice VR. It makes it easy for you to check your settings.txt, your user ID.txt, or your other files that are there. Okay, we'll go back to full screen. Bring up the menu again. Cache downloads, or cache, as you, some people like to say. This uh, means that anything you've downloaded and loaded in Janus will be stored in a folder off Janus VR. The cache or cache folder, it makes it easier. So once you visit a room once and it's downloaded the assets, it doesn't have to do it again. It makes subsequent visits to Janus faster and faster. Leave that ticked on. Okay, the next one down, this slider here, this is the RAM slider. Now, I'll demonstrate by pressing backslash, not backspace, backslash, which brings up some information. Now, if you can see where it says mem, just below where it says FPS, the green one, below the one that says triangles, says mem manager. At the moment, it's using 320 out of 2000 meg. This slider here, to the far right is 2000 or 2 gig. Now, as I move the slider, you will see it in real time start to move the memory down. Halfway is 1 gig. All the way left is 100 meg. As you can see, if I move it all the way to the left, 100 meg, it starts to unload assets. This is for people with low-end systems or people who need speed. I move it all the way to the right. Now, these assets will reload. If we press F5, the room will rebuild. It will come back around us. Okay, no problems there. Okay, press Escape, Settings. Leave that on the right-hand side. The next one is Spherical Portals. This is a an exciting experiment that James is conducting. Uh, not many people know how this works. So I'll demonstrate it for you. I'll go over here where it's uh, something nice and interesting to look at. As you can see, that's a flat portal at the moment. We can click on it. The portal will open and the room will build. If we click settings and we turn on spherical portals, all the portals in the room will now move to spheres. 
If we click on the portal, we can now see inside the room before we enter. We could see straight through it from every direction. Now this is when it gets weird. If we come through the room, Hi guys. we're now... That's, uh, before I that's a very excited Demi Lovato there. So now we're inside the room. Now this is the portal that takes us back to the lobby. So as you can see, that's the entire lobby. And if we go through this portal, we are back in the lobby. So it's a, it's a very interesting effect. You can turn this on or off. We haven't really experimented with this much. It's a work in progress, but it is a, a, a fascinating idea. Okay, I'll turn that off again. The next one is edit mode. You need to turn edit mode on if you want to move objects about in unlocked rooms. If you go to the sandbox and you want to move things or spawn things or build, you need to have edit mode turned on. Very important. Uh, I always turn that on because I'm building so much. The next one down is the JavaScript debugger. If you tick this on and you go into a room, if the JavaScript has an error, it will come up. It will not come up if there is no error in the room. So turn that on, turn that off. Next one down is asset images. If I untick that, it will unload all the images from the room. As you can see, this could help if you have some uh, speed problems. Tick it, they all come back again. And the one below that is asset shaders. Uh, we've got a shader over here in the water. I'll demonstrate by turning this off. As you can see, the water at the moment is moving or appearing to move because of the shader. Untick shaders, the water turns off. If we tick shaders again, water turns back on. This is helpful for some people who have problems with shaders. Remembering again that Janus is alpha software, a lot of these things are here so we can bug test. Okay, I think I've just about covered everything. Thanks for watching.